Dior with a difference. When it comes to choosing the right product for my skin, it's all about the ingredients for me. Nigel skincare products are authentic, fresh, and best of all, completely organic. I love the Motherland Moisturizer. It's designed to smooth and soak in the skin without ever feeling greasy, and their Jade Roller has literally become a part of my self-care routine. Visit nigelskincare.com today and receive 20% off your first order. For beautiful skin, you were born to love. pattern has just bounced back look at that without any product in the hair at all when you use share my haven's natural hair care product line your hair flourishes and becomes the main attraction prime view tv new media with a difference Welcome to the podium on Primary Television. I'm your host, Spencer Anemwere. And I know it's been a long time I've been away from Primary Television. You know, we went through the pandemic. Uh, I was in Nigeria for a long time, for a while. And then a whole lot of stuff has happened over the year, well, since last year. Uh, I'm telling you now, from Primary Television, we bring you more and more programs. We have another political program, which I'd like you to follow and watch. It's called Enough is Enough by Abu Femi, okay? He presents it for us. We also have uh, uh, the program that Mystic Marlene presents, which is called Straight Talk. And we're going to be bringing you a whole lot of other stuff coming your way. On the program today is going to be an explosive one. We have, you know, uh, we're just going to be bringing back a lot of what we've been doing before. But on today's program, we have a, a great discussion we're going to have. Uh, a lot of stuff has been happening in Nigeria recently. Uh, we have issues, uh, you know, so many political issues going up to elections. We have issues with uh, insecurity. We have, you know, so many things are happening. But the main topic we want to deal with today is to do with the the Super Cup, uh, the the Super Cup of Nigeria, who's been, you know, given, you know, a lot of accolades, has been given awards. Uh, no other than DCP Abakiari. Uh, we got information recently. Initially, a lot of us thought it was probably a, a fake news, but it turned out that he had, uh, he probably has questions to answer. Uh, the United States uh, feel he has questions to answer to in terms of uh, the, the issue with uh, the, the notorious froster that was arrested last year, Hush Puppy. So we feel that uh, it's very good that we have a discussion about this. The topic of the program today is whether, I'm just going to go somewhere, whether Hush, uh, Nigeria should hand him over to the United States. Uh, people have been saying that he's done a whole lot of good for Nigeria. This is a man who has... Uh, been the, at the vanguard of arresting the whole, you know, terrorism, fighting terrorism, arresting kidnappers and all of that. So people are saying, some people on one side are saying, is it fair that we just hand him over willingly to the United States? 
or should we give him some level of protection? So this borders on corruption, it borders on how the, the state of the Nigerian police and a whole lot of issues around this whole topic. So today I'd like to introduce the guests I have on the program today. I have on the program a man who everybody knows, he's, he's turned out to me, I call him a, an investigative a blogger, that's what I call him, an investigative blogger. His name is Chukuka Ofebu, who owns the page called uh, uh, Ijele Speaks. And Ijele Speaks is a man that, uh, who's, <laughs> who's, who's known, uh, well, he's, he's gained a lot of uh, notoriety. Some love him, some don't love him. Uh, welcome to the program, Ijele. Yeah, my brother, Spencer. Good evening and, welcome, and thanks for having me. Oh, nice to have you on the program today. Uh, and also with me yeah. today, we yeah. have uh, uh, Ben Samuels. Ben Samuels is the uh, owner of the page called Never Looters. And also he owns another page, uh, uh, an article page called uh, Night 24. It's a, it's a newspaper. Uh, ben, you're welcome to the program, Ben. Thank you very much, Spencer. Good to see you guys. Hi, Jelly. All right. Thank you, my brother. All right, guys, so we're going to kick it off. Um, today's topic, really, we know what it's all about. We've had the issues, and we're not going to go back into reading out what happened and all of that, because we know basically what this is not sure of what the program, the, 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 what happened with uh, uh, Hush Puppy and the accusations against Abakiri. I'd like to start with you, Ben. And we're going to keep it short, Ben. I want you to speak for five minutes, and then we'll hand over to Jelly, and then we might have other people joining in, one or two other people who are passionate about this topic. Because, you know, so I'd like you to tell us, Ben, going by what you've heard about this whole debacle, what is your take? Should Nigeria hand him over to the United States? I think um, there's no question about it. If we really, really mean the war against corruption, which we actually elected this president, Muhammad Buhari, on, on the ground of fighting corruption, none of us can pretend the damage, the damage um corruption has done to our country the damage um yahoo and fraudster have done to our country none of us can actually deny the fact now for the father the pinnacle a police officer that is the pinnacle of his career found himself in that kind of a compromised position i think the government should do everything to hand him over to show to the world we are ready to speak the language of fighting against corruption, which is the main reason why we elected this president. I don't really have a problem with um, the method at which the investigation and the finding out came out about. The reality is this, this was a top police officer, an intelligent police officer, a guy the whole of the nation really respect love, and he's doing a shady deal with a knowing froster. There is no question about it that this guy need to return to America immediately and clear his name for the sake of Nigeria. Okay. For okay, the ben. sake of Nigeria. Okay, but now hold you there. Uh, uh, Ijele, please can you tell us what you think of him being extradited? Because we're talking about extradition now. Do you mm -hmm. think he should be the court, the Nigerian court should extradite him to, to the United States? Uh, my brother, thank you for the question. Please, uh, why are we jumping the gun here? Before you talk about uh, extradition, have we talked about the accusation? What exactly is the crime? Now, when you, when you see people, they want to talk about these things. Uh, like I made the video, a passionate video, I will not deny not uh, knowing DCP Abba Kiari. He is a national hero, of course, someone everyone knows and someone that I've got to know personally. And now I am not saying it because I know him or I love him or just because uh, we are like friends and brothers. So I said, I'm, I, consider my, I consider him an uncle and a senior brother to me now. I need to lay this one out because I don't want people sniping at me from all corners. I just want to be as, as uh, honest as possible. Mm -hmm. Then it gets to the heart of the issue, which is what exactly is the crime? Remember, most people are just weighing on the issue based on the first report they got, which was that he's under indictment. Now, 
Over time, the U.S. Uh, uh, government, the FBI themselves, within the last uh, 72 hours, have come out openly to say that he is not under any indictment. Rather, he was mentioned. So, let us establish what the point of the United States government is, which is that he is not even under any indictment and he was mentioned. Now, going to talk about how it is coincidental that this is coming out uh, when uh, he is beating these people black and blue and uh, everywhere from north to south. It's just a, a story for another day, of which I'm not going to go there because it will be as if he is under any indictment and he has been proven guilty. Now I will be saying uh, because of this, because of that. I don't want to go there. Let us go straight to the FBI, which is okay. it is not under any indictment. I don't yes. okay. I think one second. One second. He did it. All right. What I'm going to say to you now is um, we've seen the the, the you know the WhatsApp uh, communication uh, between him and and uh, uh, Josh Puppy, which is still yet to be verified. But we know the way the FBI function. They don't. They wouldn't just come out with that kind of uh, accusation, right? So what we're saying is, give going by what we've seen, going by what has been the allegations laid against him, don't you think that it's time, and this question is to you, Ben, don't you think that it's time that he <laughs> owns up or tells Nigerians at least what happened, if anything, he has. Right? He we, has know, not we, know we know initially he made a statement. So, so Ben, I want you to answer that. Please. And then he has actually, the this guy has actually told Nigerians what happened. You remember when this information came out, the day this information came out, Abakari himself on his own Facebook page admitted for dealing with Hush Puppy, explained to some length, laughed about it, and he said in his own word, this was what happened. He received a phone call from Hush Puppy, and Hush Puppy told him somebody is after his family. He then went and arrested the guy who Hush Puppy is reporting that made a threat to his own family. He arrested the guy, taking the guy to jail. After the investigation, the guy, he find out, Abakari himself said, he find out this was not a credible information that there was no a threat to Hush Puppy's family. They were friends and they have money issue. He said he let the guy go. Okay? This was what he said. Not what I say, not what FBI say, not what anybody says. This was what Abakari said from his own mouth. Then he continued relationship with Hush Puppy, where Hush Puppy saw him and his Agbada, and he said, I want this kind of dress. This okay. was for me. Okay, Ben, I would, I would, I would, I would like you to, to respond to that. Can you respond to what he just said? Please, my brother. I'm happy he said that he got a call, but listen. This city Abakiare occupies a position whereby before you get to him, there are many uh, channels you need to get through. You remember his job is mostly operational, not administrative. And it has to go through the administrative process before it will get to him. Now, we all know how cases are. When uh, uh, such a case gets to the IRT, you that is involved, mind you, we are talking about a dead socialite who, no matter the accusation, accusations swelling around, no one has come out to uh, accuse of stealing his money, even though most of us know are uh, suspicious about the source of his wealth. But there was no court of it, uh, uh, competent jurisdiction that has found him guilty or caught him a criminal. So when you have such a case, of course, you want, and you are so highly pledged. Please, let's not pretend as if uh, we don't know how things work in Nigeria. This no, is yes, I, I think I, I totally... Okay, I, ben, ben, let me finish. Ben, let me finish. I'm let me finish. Ben, I'm ben, 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 sir, I totally dis disagree. Ben, ben, let me finish, please. With ben, my ben, finish, please. Please. Uh, please, please. This could have been after a This could have been Ote Donna. This could have been... There is no body in such a class who wouldn't be in touch with the person handling the case. And you know, when it's such a serious case like this in Nigeria, and it has to do with a threat to life, and there is someone that is well-known in society, 
There is nothing wrong in both of them uh, conversing, even during and after issue. Now, it should be a credit to this EP to have investigated and found out that this guy is innocent and he was let go. Remember, I, for instance, I want to use myself as an example. So many people, when they go to the police, when they have issues with people, they hardly tell the police the truth. You will want to make it sound as, as serious as possible and all that. Like, I've been involved in some businesses people will consider illegal. And we've been using the police, and most times we don't even tell them the truth. Let's just be as honest as possible and not pretend as if this is just out of the blue. Now, when he said that this guy saw uh, 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 an Agbada he was wearing and wanted to make his. Believe me, there is nothing wrong with that. Let Ben respond now. Ben, you respond. Ijele, Ijele, I have known you and I know where you stand when it comes to Mora. What you preach okay. is completely opposite of what you are talking about right now. Jelly, I do not. I respect you and I respect what you stood for. But how do you explain that a police officer have just arrested an innocent person due to wrong information? That guy could have. How did you know he was innocent at the time? Hold on, please. Can you just hold on, please? He arrested him on a false information. He confessed with his own mouth that after investigation, it was a false information. The arresting of the guy is not a crime, first of all. It is the right thing to do. But when he discovered that this guy was lying, he was lying. Hush Puppy was lying. Okay? He let him go. Then, as a big police officer who's supposed to have a moral standard in our society, because I have had your argument where you say we should not pretend where we are coming from as Nigeria. This is where we are. The reason why we are not pretending is because the reason Nigeria is what Nigeria is today is because we are compromising because of people we know. The society I lived in and the society you lived in, you've lived in the Western Europe, you've lived in Europe, you know what it is. You know I've what it is. I've not lived in Western Europe. Huh? I've not lived in Western Europe. Oh, you definitely have lived in Europe. And you understand a chief police officer just discovered this guy lied to him and he continued relationship with him, continued showing about that with him. By the way, Abakari now went back again and returned and deleted, addicted that the same information it gave to Nigeria, changed it to 8 million and deleted it. For me, this man is a questionable character that needs to go to America and answer questions. Because there's no doubt in my mind. There is no doubt in my mind that Abakari has used his position to oppress. Uh, Chibuzo, he has used, he has abused his position as a chief police officer of the country to insult a citizen to the point of degradation. When this guy's skin was getting rotty, Abakari find it necessary to laugh at it and sent a picture of this guy to Hush Puppy. These are evident from Abakari's own phone. Uh, okay, I, okay. Again, okay. Again, please, again, it's very important I analyze this. A lot of okay, people go. begin to identify this to be a political thing. Okay, why is it that term? Um, because if I hear uh, Mr. Um, Ejele right, Ejele said, why is it that now that he's attacking some hoodlums that this information is coming out? You Hush, please. Spencer, can I respond to this? Okay, okay. Ben, 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 I said, be, why is it now that he is fighting some hoodlums? Meanwhile, go back to the beginning of my opening statement. I said, I don't want this 
I don't want to even go to where people will be saying, is it coincidental that such a thing is happening, is not happening now that he's fighting this? He just made an exact opposite statement of what I made. Please, you have Jale. to calm down. Jale. Go, well, Jale. Please, me, go back, you can go back and replay my statement, please. After the program, go back and replay it. Now you've gotten that wrong, please. You have gotten that wrong just now, within 10 minutes of this program. Okay, you have I'm gotten on. my own statement wrong. I want to take my, let me, let me, let me take my word back. Let me take my word back. Let me take my word back. In Jele, I watch your program. You dedicated an hour to deal with this very particular matter. And it's on the record yes. everything you said on your show about Abakari. It is on the record. It's there to everybody yes. to see. So whatever I said now is irrelevant, to be honest with you. The fact that we are... Can, 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 can you watch... Now, can I come in? Can I please? Can I Please, Ben, can I, can I please? I, I want it to be a bit simple, please. Let's not make it into a round interview. Ijele, the question I have for you... Let me ask a question now. The question I have for you, Ijele, yeah. now is... Yeah, please. Why do you think that he shouldn't be handed... Why do you think he should be given protection, basically? We are not even going... I am not going to the protection side yet. I am saying there hasn't been any indictment from the FBI. They themselves have come out to say yeah, but, that yeah, this... What do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean there's no indictment? No, listen, Ijele, the, 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 the evidence... What the, the, what's been put forward at the moment, right, is a damning... This is our super cop, right? What we have, you, you speak. What we have here is damning allegations against our best, our best of our best, and is calling our best of our best a very corrupt individual. And this is weighty allegation with evidence from WhatsApp chats. I don't know, I know you're yeah, you will. I call you an investigative blogger, right. But what I think is, when you have such weighty evidence, I've seen you, like we all follow you, we've seen what you do, right? With the IPOB and all of that. When you get such evidence, right? You don't wait till you get to the court before you start saying, what are they accusing him of? This is something you hold on to and you're saying, this I'm is... Let me respond to that. Go ahead. 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 They are talking about 8 million naira right now, right? And I still, I still maintain my stance that there is nothing wrong with a policeman. See, we know what corruption is. You don't define corruption to me as a Nigerian. I know this. I live through this system. I've been victim of something uh, 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 like this. We are talking about now when they want to talk about the 300,000 that it changed from 300,000 to 8 million. Meanwhile, you are talking about two different things. The money for the Abada 300,000 is a different case. Now, some people will come and mix up the timeline and say he changed it to 8 million. No, he didn't change anything to 8 million. And I will maintain what I said in that video. If Abakia will receive 8 million naira, Mind you, he didn't receive that 8 million naira to kill that guy. If he received 8 million naira from a client that he worked for in, in the form of what I call appreciation, appreciation. I, again, remember the example I gave? I said, please, please, I'm coming. Right now, Spencer, as I'm talking to you, every policeman attached to Arthur is a millionaire. Where do you think the money is coming from? Is the person you work for. And if you know how things work, when you work for Nigerians, men, they tend to they tend to offer you things like gratifications. Now, whether the gratification is wrong or right is a different thing altogether. But in my own book, a policeman that works for some people are saying he has this, he has that. Guess what? He arrested a kidnapper that targeted so many billionaires, most of them, 99% of them, egos. Those billionaires, when after such an operation, you don't expect them 
not to call this guy and give him something because safety is very paramount and important to them. Now, I have totally nothing against any policeman receiving a, a financial gratification from a client he worked for. That is the angle I am coming from. Okay. Uh, ben, Ben. Yes. Well, I, I have a question for you, Ben. Uh, yeah, before your question, okay, you, you throw your question in, please. Throw the, it in. the question I want to ask is what um, you did highlight it a bit. We all know how it works in Nigeria, right? Where yes. police officers, even anybody can get the assistance of police officers. If you have, if you need the police, the services of a police today, you call the police, they'll tell you you have to give them money at the end of the day. That's why we know the reality in Nigeria, right? So if after what he did, he was given some sort of money for his boys, because I read the article, he said it was money for his boys, right? If mm -hmm. the money was given for his boys, is that corruption in the Nigerian context? Thank you very much for the question. We have to really, really come back to where we are going because your question is very important. But before I deal with your question, we have to understand what we are talking about here. Abakari is what we, what we are talking about. All of his beautiful job that we know is not is irrelevant today. All those good character is going into the dustbin right now because of this allegation. And this is why like, the world and Nigerians are giving Abakari opportunity to clear his own name. And so far, so good. The whole nation know that this guy is in, the, is in the deep water right now. So the question you are asking is this. If it is a corruption to give a gift to police officer, yes, it is a corruption. It is a corruption. Just because Look, it's acceptable. Hold on. Just because it's acceptable. Officers are not allowed to, they're not allowed to accept gifts? Or are they not no, allowed to accept gifts? No, to be bribing them. Because that's what they call gift. Thanks for coming. Like what? Abakari have not even admitted that Hushpopi gave him anything. Nothing. No gratification. Nothing. He said the 300,000 Hushpopi sent was never sent to him. It was sent to the teller. I want to deal with Abakari's matter from what he said from his own mouth. That's what I'm dealing with. I don't want to, I don't care about what Hushpopi has done in America. I'm thinking about what my own super police have done in Nigeria. Okay, Ben, I'm going to ask you a quick question, right? What do you think the what do you think would be the impact of Nigeria, for instance? Let's say he goes through the Nigerian courts and they decide to, they say they would extradite him. And let's say, for instance, the, the president refuses and says no. What do you yes, think the impact I, I would be you. in America in terms of in, how we will be perceived from the inter international Nigeria, country? Nigeria as a country is an independent country. They, they can decide to do what they want to do when it comes to handing over a citizen to America. So that is their prerogative. But this is a government that came out to fight corruption. This is a government that set up EFCC. This is a government that every day we see young Yahoo boys going to jail. This is under this government. We've seen a graduate who only defrauded an American one million naira, got to jail of 13 years. Under this government, we've seen all these things. So what is anybody talking about? Abakari have a license to take a life. He has a license to take a life. And Abakari is using it to enrich himself, to serve. Imagine if Hush Puppy is in Nigeria, how many police would have been following Hush Puppy? Just imagine yeah. if Hush Puppy visits Nigeria and call Abakari, I'm in town, I need escort. And escort is following, and somebody bully Hush Puppy along the way. The police that is following Hush Puppy would have killed that person. And Abakari would have targeted Amroba, who attempted to hijack his car. Okay, so you person, hold on, please hold on because this is a very important topic. This okay. young person, this Chibuzo, could have died inside that jail. Please, please, are we going to be listening to preaching here? Please don't. You okay, we are not it's preaching in jail. We are yeah. in jail. In jail, in jail, in jail, in jail do not patronize me and call me that I'm preaching. In jail, you are standing on the wrong side. You what you are defending is indefensible. In jail, in jail, in jail, Ben, Ben, can I take? Let me ask a question. Calm down, Ben. There's no point of there's no point of me talking. No, you can. I want I want I want us to keep it cordial and not make it make it. In jail, is a public speaker. In jail, is an influencer. So we need to put it to the record that what in jail is supporting is wrong for our society. It is absolutely destroy the fiber of what we're talking about as, um, as, a, as a country that want to fight corruption. All right, Ben. All right, Ben. 
uh, can, can I ask you, uh, uh, the question I want to ask you is, right? Um, in terms of policing in Nigeria, what do you think the issues please, are? Shouldn't we, please, please, as an interview, as an interview, shouldn't we be answering one same question before you do another one? No, 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 because I want yeah, to, so to, 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 to respond to him and still answer my question. No problem. But what I'm saying to you, I want us to move on. Let's not dwell on the same issues. We got to move on, and there's no time. You're you looking at your time as well. Now, what it is is right. My question now is, what do you think are the issues? Because we're talking about corruption here. Why would a police officer collect a gunje, not a gunje, collect money, if no matter how highly placed? Because I know in the UK, for instance, if Hush Puppy offered to give him money, he wouldn't take any money. He would tell him, no, I'm not allowed to do that. I can't take money. Off. Now, in the Nigerian context, they are allowed and they do take money. Now, my question is, what would push an officer to do so? And answer, you can respond to him and then come back to this question. Don. Spencer, uh, you know, I like I always tell people, I don't live, uh, I don't deal in windows, and I don't deal in assumptions or when people want to say something, they say in UK, in this, in that, really. I, I'm not going to say, I'm not going, I'm not saying that uh, Nigeria should condone corruption in any form, but please, let's talk it in answer. In Nigeria today, if you have any case you want to go for, if you don't fund the logistics and everything, it is going nowhere. Now, our issue should be, how do we reform the police to make sure that when the police is working, the, the police has a very large budget in Nigeria. Believe me. Go to the, the DPO's offices, you see how, how, how tattered the Most of the DPO offices you are seeing are being furnished by citizens. Now, you have this type of system. Reforming it is what everyone should be concerned about. And not pretend as if this is not the prevalent culture of which it is. The people that are pushing for this thing, ask them their dealings with the police. You find out that they are all good, even worse. Even worse. Now, how do we stop all this and make it more open? Because there is no communication with, between the police and the masses. It's always either you are antagonizing police or you see people that are up and using police to threaten people, intimidate others. Not just uh, uh, Yahoo Flusters, even pastors do it. Right now, there is a raging case between the criminal, John Buddha Suletif. I, I'm sorry, I won't use the name you people know him with because I've sworn never to use it. You find out, you go and check, series of people have been doing all this, is, and these are things that need to be stopped, because if the police don't take anything from citizens before they make arrests and everything, like, I can give you countless countless events where these things are happening, and there is nobody in Nigeria who will tell you that there is any police anywhere, who will do for, who something for you if you don't fund the logistics. Now, this is something we should be fighting about on how to change. So I wouldn't want to waste my time saying in the UK, in the uh, US, in this place, in that place, this is how it's been done. No, no. Let us face the reality on the ground. This is the truth. This is how it's been done. And this is not out of the blue in our system. So I wouldn't use a standard that does not exist in Nigeria to talk about things that are happening in Nigeria. That is my stance. So are you Ben? Are you? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ijele, are you telling? Are you telling me that corruption is now peculiar, or corruption isn't the same everywhere? Are you saying to me that corruption in Nigeria is not the cor corruption in the US or UK is not corruption in Nigeria? Or what are you trying to tell me? Spencer, for instance, now I know so many people. Like I lived in Turkey, I know how people use the Turkish police to set me up and they set people up. But it's the not corruption. USA, I can, please, that's corruption. I mean, USA. In USA, I can give you series of cases where even the FBI is lying against people, even lying against the whole country. Look at the Russian pollution. What was that? Something yeah, that, that was pushing by the world. But that makes it wrong, though, isn't it? That makes it wrong. Oh, hold on, hold on, please. Hold on, hold on, please. I'm coming. So yeah. when we talk about comparison, we are talking about corruption is corruption. But in yeah. this case, like I said, in Nigeria, Funding logistics for the police that will work for you is not even an issue here. 
You find out that there is a fire beneath this smoke of which I'm not going to get into there. Like I said from the beginning of this, this program, because that will be assuming that this Ipiaba Kiari is wrong or he has been indicted. Again, let them show me a, an indictment from the FBI that said that they've indicted this guy and they want him to, they want to extradite him. Then we can talk about how the issue of sovereignty comes into play. But when you are talking about giving me an example, really, you are using the UK to give me an example. People that will lock you in jail right now for saying something you know to be true, saying that you have only two genders alone in the UK can send you to jail. And these are the people who want to use to compare Nigeria. Are you freaking kidding me? No, 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 no. no, no. Come on, man. <laughs> anyway, Idele, since you're here, right, we're going to move on. Let's move on. And you can't come on this program without talking about hinting on what's happening in the Southeast in terms of uh, the insecurity in the Southeast. The question, I'm, I'm going to relate it to what we're talking about here. You always talk about uh, uh, the, the Supreme Leader of uh, IPOB and the IPOB as an organization using the police to get to people they want to apprehend, to use the police to kill their former members. They're using the police to get them arrested and all of that. Now, can't you see a correlation between that thing you're singing against, police using uh, uh, the connections, IPOB using the connection of the police to apprehend people, arrest them, even kill them? Can't you see the same thing with what Hospital did? He used the police as well, which was, in this case, our super cop, to arrest somebody who was going against him in his business and please, got him unlocked up. Please. Isn't, isn't that the same now, thing? Let me clear it on that one. We are talking about apples and oranges here. We are talking about someone that brought a report to the police. <laughs> Initially, he lied to them. Maybe he, he probably didn't lie because I know all these Yahoo guys settle issues. And when they take someone to the police, they hardly tell. Like I use myself as an example. When I was dealing in drugs, I really used police to arrest people that are owing me and they pay back. Guess what? I didn't tell police what we did. The police will have to rely on the information you provided. In this case, he provided a, 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 a report. And for that issue to have gotten to the leader of the IRTT, it must have gone through processes and he was contacted to handle the case, given the person involved, a socialite then, a then socialite. Now, it is different from saying, for instance, IPOB, when Nan the can will use his sister, Nan the can who is a police officer, to identify IPOB members who want to expose his car and taking them to kill them. Okay, you said that guy spent 30 days. If Abba Kiari was in the business, into the business of arresting people and killing them for money, don't you think that 30 days is enough time for him to have gotten rid of Chibuzo? And we are now going to use this issue to compare the case of life. These are two different issues. These okay, are I will just say, you know, I've been, my line cut off. Okay. My okay, line... Jelly, we'll come back to you. Well, ben, ben, there's a question I asked him. I asked him about, you said what I asked him, how similar it is between what he, you know, Elijah always alleges that IPOB use their, they use the police to track down people who go as, who have the opinion, the opposing view. And I'm asking him, isn't it the same thing what Hushpuppi did this time? Go on. And uh, you have had a jealous uh, position on that one. Yes. Yeah. And I must tell you something. I am not in any way questioning a jealous motive of trying to defend this indefensible position of Abakari. But I will tell Ijele, the relationship that you have with Abakari is a personal relationship. We are talking about professional conduct of one of the highest officers in the land a well-respected officer in the land. And I'm not even looking at what Hush Poppy said. I'm looking at why would he entangle himself to this? Regardless of how much personal relationship I have with Bakari, the very moment he committed this allegation, I withdraw myself. And I'll tell you, Mr. Man, you're an adult. You go answer your own name. Right now, you need to clear yourself. Talking about comparing um, Nandekanu's sister, which I have heard him just say that the guy 
sometimes the human sometimes do give information that will lead to arrest of people that are descend to to hush uh, to Nande Kano. There is no different. It's the same thing that Injele condemned that that woman is using her position for. It's the same thing that Abakari did, the highest officer in the land. So there's no difference. So you have to tag them. Mr. Angele, you have to really look at this in a very in a very similar glass. There's no two ways about it. Mr. Angele, you said with your own mouth that when you are in Turkey, okay, how IPOB people try to get Turkish police to make stupid allegations. Please, let me explain myself, please. To make allegations that is irrelevant. That you know that these are allegations that you never did. is if is false allegation. And you suffered for it. You pay your own money. You pay your sweat. They inconvenient your life. Just imagine the police now discover all those allegations are false. And tomorrow morning, you see the same IPOB guy in Turkey who have swear an oath that he will destroy your life. Having a drink with the same police that locked you up yesterday. That lock you up for I, a moment. Let me respond because you uh, asked me a question on that. Because I need to respond to one of the questions. So you don't you want me to respond to the question you asked me. I have a question. Let me finish. Let me finish, please. Let uh, me finish. Okay, make it short. Ask me a question. You can't ask me a question and don't. I am not asking a question. I am explaining. I'm talking, please. Brother, no, no, sorry. then you shouldn't mention me. No, 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 if you want to make it personal, then I'm okay. Ben, ben, let him answer me then, please. Ben, let him answer. Just I told you, Spencer, Spencer, I told you this. If yeah. I'm if I'm going my 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 ways of thought will be completely distracted. I have to okay, stop. Finish up. Okay, okay, finish up quickly. Let me let him finish up. Finish up, but then quickly make okay. it up. And then yeah. With all this, I have explained now because Angela is trying to divide them to say they are not similar. Listen, this is a different matter. This is a different matter. And I'm just asking Angela, Angela, how do you feel if the police officer who accepted a false allegation against you deal with you? Make a case against you tomorrow. If that the same police officer is having a champagne, is having a drink, is exchanging hats with the same IPOB guy, you know that made allegation against you. How would you look at that police? Please, that's my question. Please, now nah, let me respond. You, you see, who needs who needs who needs uh, 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 anyway, so let me answer it this way. When he said that this is not done anywhere, he is not acting against the own country. And I gave him instances where it has happened. I mentioned IPOB, talking, talking to this. I mentioned the UK, which is where he lives. So I don't know how you are now making my own points for me. You asked me in that, in what led to that question, you see? How people will just take your 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 response and put it in a different total in a totally different different context. What led to that statement I made was you saying it doesn't happen anywhere in the world that we need to use the world standard. Then I ask you, what world standard? Look at what happened in Turkey. Look at what is happening in the UK where you live. Look at uh, even in the US, uh, there are people who the, their police can never even arrest or arrest their own children. This is FBI you are talking about. Look at what how they handle the Hunter Biden case. Currently, the guy is selling artworks. So, what led to that statement is not in defense of my friend. It is to buttress my own point and answer the question you asked me, which is does it happen anywhere in the world? I gave you instances. So, I wonder how. You told it as if I am using it as if as a defense for Abakian. Come on, man, let's try and be honest and uh, 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 truthful for, for a moment, please. Are you okay, okay. now? Well, like, guys, 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 okay, Ben, 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 we're not going to go back and forth anymore. Now, I want us to prefer because what we're talking about now really yeah, ideally is corruption in Nigerian police. Now, in terms of moving forward, whatever transpires or whatever happens. We'll find out eventually because it's still a, a, like a, a said, it's still an allegation. He still needs to go and answer the evidence is presented officially. So we still don't know. It's still based on hearsay at the moment. Now, Ijele, for me, this borders on corruption in Nigerian police. We know it's monumental corruption. This is what we're pointing at, really. Now, my question is 
what solutions do we have? Because you know, in Nigeria, we not all know what how rotten the police is, right? Mm -hmm. How can we go about fixing? If you were given the job, you did it as a consultant on fixing the police. What would you do? I would decentralize the power of the Nigerian police, and in decentralizing it, I will not use the standard of other countries that don't have the same culture or don't have the the same uh, 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 IQ IQ points. At the average IQ point of Nigerians must come into play. Like when you are talking about, hey, why can't we be like America? What have you? No. Look at where you are, work with what you have. Now, you need to decentralize the Nigerian police, but then there should be, like in America, they have the police, then they have the FBI, and they have the have drama marshals. You have a body that will facilitate uh, over things, like when there is a class, so because there is there is abuse in every system. Like if you decentralize the police, as you have been saying, you've seen how governors are using police to intimidate people in their own state, even the governors that are not in the that, that are not the ruling party at the center. They are doing all this. So in order to stop this, you have a, 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 a body that will oversee all those things to check abuses. But then you need to decentralize the police and give more power to cities. It is not even a governor that should control the police of a city. It should be like we don't have mayors, but you have local government chairman. It should be under the local government uh, control. That way you have local police policing the locality and people tend to perform better when they are policing the community where they grew up in. Not a situation whereby someone will be born in Onisha, then he'll be transferred to Sokoto to go and work there. Watch, you don't or you don't owe anything to that place, you don't owe allegiance to that to that land. So decentralizing it should come first because when you break it up, it will be difficult for corruption to thrive there. Because if one local government in all your states decides to be corrupt, that will not have effect on how a local government in Bayasa State or Sokoto State or Borno State is doing their own. First is to decentralize it. And the police service commission should never be headed by any politician, should never be headed by any former AID or former IG or anything that has to do with the police because you can't use someone from the system to police the system. It will never happen. To me, this is the only logical and easiest way to do it. All right. Okay, and Ben, what, what, what would your own suggestion be if you had to look into I the think, police? I think I, 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 I kind of agree with what Injele have just said on this very particular one. I agree that they need to decentralize police. We need to also look at into community police. I remember um, when I was growing up, the officers that come from my community, that were serving in my community, we know them. We know their children, their wife. Um, I remember one beautiful officer like that that lives with us. He's, he's a Kogi guy, he's a Gira guy. We know him, we know his house, we know his wife, and he's the, um, he's the DPO in our community. So this man knows us. He knows the Amroba within the community. So this man will not allow harm to come to the community where his own children is living. Okay, he's not going to be compromised. So we need to look at this community police in a very dynamic way. That is the only way I still believe oh, that Nigeria can be able to, because a community police, for example, if an officer that is from Ogidi, you know he's from Ogidi, he's transferred back to Ogidi, he's serving in Ogidi, or they recruited him in Ogidi. Spencer, you know him, you know his father, you know his cousin, you know his auntie. You don't want harm for him because you know him. He don't want harm for you. You protect him. You give him tips. You say, this one, they are the criminal. They are killing our goat in our neighborhood. He knows. So with that, we are having police closer to us. But when you have a set of people from another place move all the way down, they need a house to sleep. They need a new friend. They need to be compromised to be accepted in the society by the criminals. Because our society don't actually celebrate criminals. We only announce them when they made it. So when we have a police in our community, I think it will go a long way to address this 
lapses and this perpetual corruption that you see. A police that is transferred from Kogi State to Lagos. No, nobody in Lagos. A police that is recruited in Kogi State, recruited in my community. That police is not under pressure to go and build a mansion. He knows how he has been living before he was recruited. So we can start recruiting from home. Yes. All right. And, okay, seven, and, and let me add something else. Okay. We, yes. need to, we need to also look into the way police officers are recruited. You have so many people who have the passion for police. Like I myself, I remember one day I came, we were, I, I was with my father one Saturday afternoon. One Saturday afternoon, I was with my father. I told him that, that mind you, this was uh, my primary three. Imagine how old I was then. I told my dad that I think I'm supposed to be a police officer, I'm supposed to be a cop. My father shouted me down and told me certain things, who will take you in police, who do you know, who will get you the form. And my father is not the type that would, that would want to bribe you for anything or to do anything for you. So then he told me that the police is so dirty, so corrupt. You go there now, you, I don't, you know, he, was, he always felt that I'm this aggressive person who, you know, <laughs> even how I grew up, you know, the environment and surroundings. He, I told him, no, I think I have the, this person. This is my calling. This is my calling. He, but when you, you drill down uh, to his, uh, to what led to his opposition, you find out that just the recruitment uh, exercise itself has been flawed. Now the policemen that will go on to become IGs, AIGs, commissioners of police, and all the rest of them. All those guys, their number one allegiance lie with, lies with the person that got them. So yes. we found out that the whole thing has been corrupted even before the person started to work. Mind you, the same person that got them the job will always try to fast track their promotions and push them up. When you have that, you, find, you, you check it. Almost every police officer you see owes his allegiance, one not to Nigerians, no. But yes. the person that got him the job and the people controlling the police, at the end of the day, when, when the interest of the common person comes to a head with the interest of the person or the group of people that either gave him the job or will help promote him, you find out that most times they will tilt towards the people that got the job. So we should make the police recruitment more open Yes. more open and not a situation whereby you have people who want to join the police because they have the passion to, for, for the job and they love it. I could have given my life for the Nigerian police had I wanted to for money. Believe me, yes. because even from eight years, I already knew what I would be and how I see things. But then, yes. the people that want to get the job don't have the opportunity to get there. The people who don't want it but just want to go there to make money, be on salary for financial security, and the upward uh, mobility in the force. They have yeah. people, then they will be put there. That is why we have insecurity in Nigeria because the police is our first line of defense. When that first line of defense has been corrupted from inception, believe me, there's no hope for that country. Okay. I think, um, ben, do you want to say something? I wanted to ask a question. Say, it's, very, it's very important that we really understand the job of police in Nigeria. Yes. Nigerians deal with police every day. This is, uh, as he said, they, they are the first people that we contact. They are the first people in the community. Uh, regardless of how much we try to um, validate them, they are, wonder they are doing wonderful jobs and they put their life on the line with the peanut that they are receiving because Nigerian mm -hmm. government is not taking care of Nigerian police. Okay. I mean, the institution that's supposed to be taking care of them, they are not being taken care of. Uh, there was a time I was posting about Nigerian police quarters, the building, the way they're staying. Even a dog will not be able to survive in that kind of building. But this is where they are living. So it's things okay. something need to be done about their life. And they need to wake up as well and start to see that they need to form a proper union that can assist them to get to where they need to be. Another thing is this Nigerian police is not any political party police. It's not APC police. It's not a PDV police. It is Nigerian police. It is the people's police. Okay? This is very important. The corruption in Nigerian police today is the is the is the reflection of the society where that we are in? 
which we are trying to fight. And this is the reason why there's insecurity. Corruption is called injustice. Corruption is injustice because you are taking what belongs to others. You are converting it to yourself. So you are denying others of justice, denying others of education, denying others of housing, denying others of schools, denying others of hospital because you want to do it to yourself. So this is the reason why we are talking today. And this is why I am so highly disappointed with Abakari. I have no problem with him. I praise him on this show. I posted him on this show. I wish him happy birthday on my show. I have greeted him. I have never criticized him once. I have always yes. have a good word for him. But after looking at those response that he came up with, I look at myself, I said, maybe all along, yes. maybe all along, we are misunderstood. We must understand this guy. It's not he. It's not he who he say he is. So we need to look at his character. Oh, oh, okay, this, okay. Is this is why okay. I'm saying that it's for his own good and for the sake of Nigerian police, for the sake of Nigerian public to defend himself. I don't want yeah. America to to do anything unjustifiably to him. But he need to defend himself. Okay. Oh, okay. I need to. Uh, I need to move on now. The quick quick question I want to do is. Tomorrow, we know what tomorrow is, yeah? We uh, we need to touch on this, I know you have a passion about this one. What would be, what should be the role of the police tomorrow? I mean, the IPOB have given a sit-at-home order, right? That, um, no, in the whole of Biafra land, which is the southeast, I think, the five states and a few other states, that there should be no, mark, schools should open on every Monday going forward. What, you, what do you think the police should do in terms of this order? The police is the federal police. And people from outside Nigeria are given an order inside for people inside not to go around, not schools to close, banks to close, uh, business markets to close. What should be the role of the police? It's for the police to rule out every weapon in their arsenal tomorrow because when you have a society where jobless criminals like China, the one that calls himself China, and is not even using his, his real name. He has removed all his photos on uh, this thing. Faceless people that are being used by politicians to make noise. The sit at home you are seeing is just people trying to uh, sound uh, really fast. You understand? They know they don't have the support of the masses because if they had the support of the masses, they wouldn't be intimidating people. Now, why would you as a citizen pay your tax? Spare your tax, sorry. I know this uh, pastor's language is as what you do by mouth. Why will you, as a citizen, pay your tax or obey your government when criminals from anywhere can just stay there and issue orders? And so, to show that Nigeria is a sovereign state and it's not a lawless place, all those places, those the uh, horse sports, like when you come to Imo State, all these people are not going to show that. They just go into villages and there are some places where they still have confused people supporting them, like my own place, it's local government. A lot of uh, people there they support uh, the PDP. I will mention you know, because there's mostly PDP that is doing this in Nemo State, and they've come out openly to say that the attacks in Nemo State is not about any people, but it's about the uh, Nemo uh, State uh, uh, governor and his position, which they've been after. For a very long time. So when you have such a thing where you have a group of uh, jobless individuals threatening the peace of the people and the movement of the people, there is no other thing the police, not just the police, you deploy the military because their job is to protect the nation from both external and internal internal uh, 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 dangers. And this is an internal danger that is causing the police should roll out their tanks, the military should roll out their tanks. And make sure that people, majority of the people, want to go and, 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 and carry out their duties, their businesses, go to their jobs tomorrow. And why would jobless criminals do that? And you have the police, please. The police should be as ruthless as possible and show them who is boss. If you don't do it now, another group will come out tomorrow and do it by then. You have a lawless society. Can and when you have when you have a breakdown of law and order, who are the people that will suffer most? The ordinary individuals, the ordinary citizens. And it plays into the minds of the people that they have no hope when their government cannot uh, protect them. So for the government to, to show itself as the 
existing authority in the, in the country, the police should come out en masse and protect ordinary citizens. And you see that all these scriptures are just uh, noise makers. They all disperse. None of them make issues the best are in the future. So that's all I have to uh, uh, say on it. Okay. Ben, I, I think um, I agree um, with um, Ijele on the areas of uh, police coming out to defend the public that want to carry out their businesses. But I, however, disagree with bringing out arms and the weapon on the street. They should be out to make sure people carry out their businesses. And any other person that is saying you can't go outside, that person should not be allowed to exist tomorrow, in my own opinion. But calling them, calling order, and say people should stay at home is a human right thing. It is the law on that constitution. Telling people to say, you're not going anywhere, you're protesting. You're not going anywhere. But you don't need to force others who don't want to participate. It's, it's their right. But you must not force other people who don't want to be part of it that they mm -hmm. must be part of it. So this is where your right is now going to be conflicting with other people's right. So you are calling. Nigerians should not be, um, people should not be out tomorrow to protest for Nande Kano. That's your own priority. Mm -hmm. Whoever believes in your message can decide to stay at home and avoid trouble. But whoever wants to go outside should be protected. And this is why the government must do everything to make sure any citizen that wants to be out about tomorrow can carry out their businesses and everything in the safety and under the protection of Nigerian government. That is my own opinion on that area. Okay. Okay, Please, Can I add something? Oh, sorry, okay. but, sorry, sir. Sorry, Jelly. But the people are within their right to protest, to stay at home and protest if that is what they call for. So nobody should go against that. Um, if they want to take a holiday tomorrow, by all means, let them do it. But they must not force other people to do what they want to do. Okay. Okay. Go on, Ijele. Go, Ijele, go to on. Add, to, add, to add to what he said, if people are not forcing you to go to the market, you shouldn't force them to stay at home. Like you are saying the same thing, but I want to disagree with him on one thing. He said the military should not come out. My brother, let's stop kidding ourselves. The average police station in your in anywhere in Nigeria eh, can be overwhelmed by 30 people. You know why? It didn't start from this IG, nor the IG before. When it comes to purchasing of weapons, go and check how much Nigeria has put into equipping the Nigerian police in the last 20 years. Then go and check what they have in their armor. You find out that this is highly depleted. I want to use the most data uh, for instance. There was a time I was uh, speaking with uh, some people very close to the government. I told them, hey, you really need to do these guys. They don't even have logistics. That's why they can't do the show. And you find out how many policemen do we have in Nigeria policing the citizens. Now, by the time the senators have collected theirs, the House of Reps members collect, collect the decent people orchestrating this violence. So by the time they give the VIPs take theirs, how many do you have left? So the army, it is necessary that the army appears that we have our military on the ground to help the police. Most times, people tend to reason with their brains when they see a military uniform. But if you come to a bus stop, Mm -hmm. and hang just an army uniform there. Believe me, you see how the motorists will behave. It's, we, since the, these people are hell-bent on killing law enforcement agents, you need to show them a superior firepower. <coughs> when they, all these guys that are burning police stations think they are doing it for their are not doing that, it's for private business and for political gains for some people. And they've been told by their criminals their criminal leader, who is in the cage right now, singing the national anthem and reciting the national pledge every morning, happily. He has told them that he has declared their crime. Remember, I said it happened in December that any police and military we see is a full and terrorist in uniform. And these guys, when they come and see that actually there are weapons everywhere, they, that the government 
is serious, they will draw. So in order to avoid any fight, you see, for instance, all these bingos that you see that are making noise, why do you think they will not attack me in the street? Because they've seen how I deal with people. Sometimes, my brother Ben, we shouldn't let our emotions and sympathy cloud our judgment. I've used this analogy before. It's not every fire that you quench with water. Some fires, if you want to, like bush fires, if you want to quench them with water, they tend to exacerbate it. But we see some firefighters, when they see a bush fire, instead of using water or any other thing, they will create a perimeter where the fire has not reached. Now, isolated from every other place. From that place the fire has not reached, they will start a bigger fire that will go and meet the other world, then consume it. Yes, you have, you bought some other places that fire has not gotten to, but that is just to save every other land from getting destroyed. That is why you need a superior firepower, like in Imo State, the Imo State governor, uh, I believe he has his money, was in it, and uh, in conjunction with the federal government, they brought 98 general purpose machine guns in Imo State. Guess what? Since then, over has been peaceful. So it tends to work bingos. Guns have a way of letting people think, all right, because when they come in absence of guns, anyone can misbehave. But when they see a superior firepower, believe me, they wouldn't even try to attack the police, knowing that the military will be there. Then, inadvertently, you have saved the peace of the society. Again, we need the army, the navy, the air force, civil defense, everyone. Jealous, 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 jealous. We are in a democracy. We are in, a, regardless of how you look at this situation, we are in democracy. Let the Nigerian police and Nigerian security forces fight smart, tactical smart. Um, they should start. But America, like, uh, hold on, they are not like that. Right. As, as they are, if America is democratic. It's a democratic country, right? They said they are the people who are copying. But you see, when it's it, it right. overwhelms the police, you I, see I, the I, national I, guard. I, you need to allow me to land, please. Uh, I, 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 there's something. I'm just trying to keep it. It is very important that we must not turn the street of Nigeria into a war zone. And this cannot happen if Nigerian, if Nigerian police are doing the intelligent, exactly what we talked about before, the community intelligent sharing, gathering, where they know these criminals and pick them up tonight before they wake up tomorrow morning. Okay? It happened in a dose state. Wait, hold on. When a day election was on, there was a big atmosphere that is going to be war and carnage. Yes. A those people conducted election and there was no one person that lost their life. Because the security forces did something. They take care of what they need to take care of before the day. So the lion and tigers, all of them went into hiding. So it is very important Nigerian police to start today, not tomorrow. No wait for anybody tomorrow. Because if they have any intelligence that this person is forming a group to cause trouble, let them go and take this person away. So that... I don't know. Will... I don't, my brother, I'm coming. One minute, please. Don't forget what you're saying. I don't know if you saw what Spencer put here. Again, we are comparing apples and oranges. But in the election, I can take credit as the person that got the format that made it where it is. No one can, can argue against that. I told people this is how to do it. You, every polling station must be protected. Always have your cameras. These people that are doing this are camera shy. They won't be using like. But this is a different issue. You have a place, a situation whereby people have been told by the leader, the fellowship issue, to ambush the police, ambush the military. In those states, no one was attacking military checkpoints. No one was attacking government properties at the rate is being attacked in Ebola. Now we are talking about two different scenarios. These are guys that look at all the guns they are using. Even when they use their ESMMM, which is what I call them, they launched it. Look at the guns they were carrying. Guns taken from the military and the police. Those guns, they did not take them from 
begging or pampering those guys. They killed those people. These are people who have killed and told you that they are ready to kill more. You don't treat them with kid gloves before evil land becomes Borono State. Jelle, you, you, also, you also understand. I understand exactly what you are saying. And I'm not going to disagree with you on that area, what you just said now. But it is important that at the top of every conversation we are having, we have, we're not in a military regime. Um, none of those states is in a war zone that we need armored tankard and helicopters and aeroplane and everything. Are you are you with me, my brother? It's a war zone. It is a war zone. You don't in fact. Let me tell you what you don't get. These guys are not people who are reasonable. Check the amount of drugs that are being gotten from their uh, 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 the several camps. These guys are crazed ideologues. Imagine people that have believed what a liar told them when he said the Israelis are going to fight with them. They even brought filmmakers and told them that this manifestation of the prophecy that this has come. Do you know these people are not reasoning like you? These are people that spent how many years looking at the left ear? People who have been brainwashed. That, spent, that even believe that the president died and a clone replaced him. Now, understand the people we are talking about. The people that have been lied to by their God that Biafra is here, that every other person is a target. Hmm. You are going to make our police, uh, our policemen sitting dog if you don't show these people actually that the government is willing to speak to you in the language you understand. And if you notice, ever since the, the president turned into a lecturer, look at what happened in the northeast and northwest over the over last week. All of them heard it in a language they understand. Now peace is gradually returning over there. In Imo State, it was one attack after another before they were they were destroyed, recycled in a way, and all. <laughs> A lot of people now saw that, hey, this is dangerous for us. When people don't see danger, especially people who don't listen well, when they don't see danger, they don't behave. Believe me, I know how hard it is to lose a soul. And that is why I'm fighting to tell them the truth and the only possible outcome. Whether a military or a, a, a civilian regime, any country where you attack their military and the police, they must deploy their, their army and everything at their disposal from the USA to China. Everywhere you don't kill police and a military personnel and you, you will be treated with kick gloves. It has never happened. It Enough never fairness. happened. Enough fairness. Enough fairness. Okay, guys. Enough fairness. Guys, 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 I think we're going to have to wrap it up now because uh, we're, 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 we're going to have to wrap it up. Ben, in your close, we're going to make, you're going to make your closing remark. And Ijele, you make a question and then we'll wrap it up because we've had enough time now, yeah? So go on, right. man. No, I yeah. know there's something I wanted to say, but uh, because if I start that one, it will be a long conversation. No, no. Again. no go, 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 go I want to really keep clear here that what we want to achieve for Nigeria as a body or as young people, because we are young people, we are. I am very happy that we are getting involved in politics. We are having a conversation. We must take hatred out of our conversation we can disagree. I can come here and disagree with Tinjele from now to tomorrow. I disagree with Spencer from now to tomorrow. But we must never allow hatred to be part of our disagreement. We should allow faith and hope to be part of our disagreement. Knowing fully well that our argument can lead to a change, a positive change that benefits everyone. What I have discovered is that a lot of other groups that are saying there is no Nigeria, they have allowed hatred to foster their hearts, that they can have a legitimate argument without hate, without hate. And when there's hate, then you can take somebody's life. Then we, everything that we've described now will begin to manifest because hatred is involved. You can have a disagreement with Nigeria. You can have a disagreement with how Nigeria is. Also question your own ideology you must never allow yourself to buy lies that has been sold everywhere 
is not appropriate. What is happening in the eastern part of Nigeria today is lied. It started on lied and it has taken a lot of people's life. What is happening in the northeast, in the northern part of Nigeria is greed. Is greed. Absolute greed. So the government must do more to provide jobs for Nigerians because a man that is working that have what he's doing, we not believe in this nonsense that is being propagated. This is nonsense. This is nonsense. You cannot give people a country from Facebook page. You cannot insult people to give somebody a country from a platform, from a radio. It doesn't work anywhere in the world. It talks about involvement. So my advice to the eastern part of Nigeria, the young men there, Get yourself together, get involved, win election, challenge your puzzle, challenge your uh, or Kalo, challenge them, be in charge of them. That is a real Biafra. The real Biafra will be when you're in charge of your community, when you are delivering on your community, when you are participating. As long as you carry this your Android and on the internet looking for who will say I stand for Biafra, you can only see more wrong that we agree to that. Because you are not going to get it. It is impossible. That is my own advice for them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ben. All right, Idele, in your closing remark, please. Okay, I will try to uh, 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 cover everything we've said. Like I said before, I, I'm, I always let my uh, make my stance known to people and I try to rationalize my view. You may disagree with on the i don't i didn't go into the issue of sovereignty because we are yet to receive any official extradition order from the usa that one is apart we can disagree on that one you see as i disagree with ben i don't think even this one hour is enough if ben has time next weekend he can host me on his platform we yeah. can begin this conversation from here from abakiari or any other thing i think that is because that. i am I am open to discussion. And you and I disagree on this one, but not we do not agree on another. But I want to thank him for making uh, 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 comments about hate. Hate is what failed leaders sell to their people. Because when you are not selling them hate, you should be telling them what you are doing, what they, uh, you have been doing with the money you receive. And like you told them, you can't get a country from radio ranting, which is what we've been shouting <laughs> for a long time. Again, these are crazed ideologues that don't know anything. Check all the play, all the leaders that use divisions to control their people. They ended them in, uh, in uh, uh, they put their people in disastrous positions. Even when some of them, after some of them died. The legacy they left behind. That is why I think we should copy more from Rwanda, not just their infrastructural programs. President Paul Kagame, bless his heart, the greatest leader alive in Africa today. He outlawed the mentioning of religion and ethnicity in Rwandan politics. We find out that when those two things were removed, all those failed politicians immediately went out of business. In Nigeria, I don't think that we have grown to the stage. We haven't seen enough damage yet to know the danger of hatred, especially when it's coming from a religious or an ethnic standpoint. And I don't hope we get to there. So we can't even pass such a law. But we can enlighten and educate our people more. Enlightenment and like my own enlightenment and education, I don't even speak to any Nigerian that is up to death again, on change, because most of them, you can't help them. I want to focus on the young generations to make sure they don't make the mistake of this present world. They should, like our brother said, they should get involved in politics. Know that politics is not a game they should live in the hands of a few. We in Igbo land, we've been doing this since 1999. The people we, that, said they, that said they went to Joss in 98. On our behalf, we still have not heard back from them. Next thing, they started uh, funding one criminal to be using the Afra to distract 
our people as if you just have to fold your hands like this, wait until the Afra comes before you build roads. Look at Bono State under what what Zulumi is doing. Look at Samuolu of Delta of uh, Lagos State, what he's doing. We all have, uh, like, personally, I was against uh, uh, the Jalaba ditching a sitting governor, like, he literally openly worked against him. He lost the primary of his own party. That was too high handed. But look at what Samuolu has been able to do. Are we going to deny it? No. When people are working, you find out that most of all these transgressions will be forgotten. Just like you see in Imo State, what the governor is doing, if you notice, even before the criminal Usain Bolt was arrested, the shout of Supreme Court governor died. Why? The governor started constructing roads, building things, giving money to citizens directly. This one is not to give to the local government or commissioner to do that. No. He brought people together, gave the money, go and invest. Now, whether they are going to invest it in, in uh, businesses like farming or any other thing, it's a story for another day. But when you are giving people something, your yeah, citizens are getting something from the government, they tend to be difficult to be swayed by a radio lantern. I borrowed this word from our sister, blessed of who, by the way, they are threatening. You find out that it is very difficult. I said something on BBC New Zebu. And uh, many people didn't uh, hear that because it was done in Hebrew. What did I say? I said, if you bring 10 Norwegians, if you bring 10 Nigerians and tell them that you want to destroy Nigeria, that Nigeria should be destroyed, eight out of that 10 would agree with you on average. On average, because they don't feel that they're getting anything from their own because when you bring 10 Norwegians and tell them, hey, come let us destroy Norway and burn it down, nine would give you up to the police. The only one that will agree with you is drunk. Is drunk. <laughs> Why? Because they are getting something from their government. You won't see them. So all the, the failure of leadership and failed leaders are the ones pumping this religious and tribal hatred we are seeing. Thank you, my brother. Uh, I'd like to thank both of you for coming on Prime View to the podium on Prime View Television today. Uh, Ijele speaks. Uh, you know I call you. Know I call you. I call you an investigative blogger. That's what you are, investigative <laughs> blogger. <laughs> so that's the, the title. Like, thank, thank you for you, coming man. on the program. And uh, Ben, my on Never Losers and Night Twenty Four News. I uh, thank you very much for coming. So we do follow. Please, everyone, do follow us on Prime View Television. The podium is back and it'll be on every week now. I'm back fully fit and we've got so many programs to roll out. We have the Anambra State elections that's going to be coming up. We're going to be having so many of the government officials, people, the aspirants. We're going to hopefully have Saludo, if I have people like that. We're going to have them on, on the program and we're going to keep you posted. So keep following us. Keep following, follow Idele, follow Ben, follow all those people who are giving you. This is all, the whole idea. We need to educate everyone, exchange of ideas. That's what we need. We don't need to shy away from discussions. We might have our own views like the so dear, but let's exchange them. And we have a middle ground. And just all to do with pushing Nigeria forward. So thank you, everyone. Thank you guys for coming on the program. Thank and you. on this note, I'll say thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. See you. Thank you. Prime View TV. New media with a difference.